My name is Li Hong Wang. I'm a professor at Caltech. I work on imaging, uh, primarily photoacoustic tomography, but we also built the world's fastest camera for ultra-fast phenomena. If you were to use your smartphone to record a video, you're talking about maybe 30 hertz frame rate, meaning you capture 30 frames per second. Um, that's good enough for daily phenomenon. But if you want to capture something much faster, uh, of course, the fastest phenomenon in the world is light propagation. And light pulses propagate at a speed of light. Um, as we know, that's the terminal speed. Nothing can propagate faster than the speed of light. And we have to do something very different. Um, the fastest 1D camera is something called street camera. That gives you 1D images, but at a very high, not frame, but line rate. So we want to add one more dimension to it. Yeah, so a good anal analogy is you can watch something through a sled. And you can watch a horse racing by, for example. You know, that doesn't really give you an intuitive picture of what's going on. You know, for us, we very much want to mimic your smartphone, but at a much higher frame rate. So we added the vertical dimension to a standard street camera. Now we can capture x, y images, but at 100 billion frames per second. So that's. 1 billion is 10 to the 9th. Um, in fact, we've upgraded our system to 10 trillion frames per second. At this type of rate, even at 100 billion frames per second, we can see a light pulse propagating in space. So we're capturing the scene literally at the speed of light. Uh, recently, we extend this, extend this technology to application, uh, something called mock cone. Right? If I speak, I stand st still here and talk, I emit approximately a spherical wave going out spherically. But if I walk and talk, the wave front will be distorted. If I walk passing the speed of sound, at a speed of sound or passing the speed of sound, I will create a cone structure. That's called a, a sonic mock cone. That's the sonic version of mock cone. It's better known as sonic boom because when a supersonic jet runs at the supersonic speed, it'll generate this loud noise when it breaks this sound barrier. And I always wonder if there's this photonic version that we can image. So there's this photonic microphone. So something has to propagate superluminally, meaning the, sound, the light source has to propagate at a speed faster than the speed of light in the medium. Right? Now in vacuum, of course, nothing can propagate faster than the speed of light. But if we have a background medium of some sort, the speed of light will be reduced in that medium relative to the speed of light in vacuum. And what we did was we create a tunnel where the speed of light in, t in the tunnel is greater than the speed of light in the, in the medium. And so we propagate a light pulse, a very short light pulse in that medium. We you know, spray some scatterers within a tunnel so it'll generate secondary light sources. And the light source will be propagated in the background medium. So the light source will propagate at a greater speed. And that create a superluminal light source. And that will create a light, a, a photonic mock cone that will you know, basically um, tag to this light source and propagate this way. And it was really cool to watch. It's 100% analogous to the sonic version of mock cone. In terms of applications where uh, for mock cone, it's very fundamental. This is a fundamental phenomenon. Uh, there's a version which is called Cherenkov radiation. And this has uh, even applications in medicine. Um, Brian Polk, many of you know him, uh, his group has been using uh, Cherenkov radiation to monitor radiation dose. You should check out his work as well. Um, there are many applications for our camera, of course. Um, Anytime you said, I wish I have a faster camera when you monitor a certain phenomenon, you should think about our camera. Uh, now, sometimes uh, people say, hey, I don't need that kind of frame rate. That's too high for us. Don't worry. We can slow down our camera uh, to a rate that you need. Um, now, of course, this idea, the idea we use to generate this camera can be translated into many other versions. Um, you can start with a base device. Then we use, use our method. You can make the camera faster. And so we can fill the gap between the standard, the current limit. The current limit for a, a sufficient number of frame is, uh, is about one kilohertz or two, kilo, two kilohertz frame rate. 
And so now, of course, we're talking about 100 billion frames per second and 10 trillion frames per second. We can fill many orders magnitude in between using our technology. So um, the camera is, uh, is very generic. You know, it's very much like um, we have a camera that can image really fast. So this is the temporal resolution. And, but you can adapt any type of uh, optical imaging devices to it. You know, it's like a CCD camera, for example, that can be attached to a microscope or a telescope. So our camera can be used the same way. So we can attach our camera to a microscope, then we, we can study spatially microscopic structures, or we can attach to telescopes, um, maybe a, a Hubble telescope, you know, so then you can just look into the outer space and discover some very much macroscopic phenomenon but hopefully there's some temporal information you can use um, to, to study the phenomenon. Um, this is, again, very, very generic. You can use it in many different ways. And some people liken our camera to be a temporally microscope or you know, temporally microscopic device and that allows you to uh, detect ultra-fast phenomena with very high temporal resolution. For example, one of the biomedical applications we're, a we're after is to image action potential propagation uh, in a neural network. So essentially we want to see the live traffic uh, within the brain and, and can we find out how the brain is wired and that would uh, elucidate um, the, the mysteries of the brain. 